Hello there my friends, hope you all are having a fantastic day right now. This is the second part in the building a game using linked list series and this will be the last part and in this part we will be finishing up the game. So having said that, let's get started. So next we should be able to move our train. So in order to do that, we will have to handle certain events. An event is anything that is going to change something on the screen. So for example, if we have a close button, then Clicking on the close button is an event or pressing any key on the keyboard is an event, clicking on the mouse is an event and so on. So we will have to process these events and carry out different activities. So let us have a function to handle these events. So let me declare a function here called process events. So process events is going to do some stuff based on some events. So let's go ahead and define this function in our game.cpp. So here we have the process events function and all this does is it checks for the type of the event and if the event is closed, if we click on the X button at the end of the screen, then it closes the window and it checks for key presses. And if it's W, then the direction is up. If it's S, it's down. If it's A and so on. And it also checks if we click W when we are not moving down. Because if you are moving down, you should not be able to move up. That is how the game works. So that's what we are doing here and a really simple function. And the reason we have an error here is because we haven't defined this event object. So let's go ahead and do that in our class. SF just like that. And now it's all good. So where are we going to call this process events function? So process events, we are going to process the events every frame so we will have to call it inside the while loop inside the run function so let's go ahead and do that so here we have the run function and just after render we will call the process events function so having done this we should now be able to maneuver the train using wasd keys so let's go ahead and test that out so as you can see, the train is moving and if I press S, it moves down. If I press D, it moves right, W and A. So it all works well. And yep. So the next part of our game is going to be about Snoopy. So again, Snoopy is going to be randomly generated at different places and we have to handle that and stuff. So let's go ahead and do that. First, we will have to generate a random position for Snoopy. So we will implement that function. So for this, we will need a vector 2f to store Snoopy's positions just like that. And we will need a function to generate a random position for Snoopy. So this function will return a vector 2f, which we can store in Snoopy pos. So let's go ahead and implement this get Snoopy pods function. So this function is really simple. All we are doing here is using the random class of C++ to actually generate a um, position for Snoopy and these numbers are not just random numbers but I have specified them so that the position is within the boundaries of the screen. Next we will be handling the case where the train actually touches Snoopy and in that case we would have to generate Snoopy again at a random place and the train's length will also increase. So that's how the game works as we have seen and let's go ahead and implement that function. So that function will be called handle snoopy touched so let's implement that again in game.cpp so here we have the function and in this function we are just checking if snoopy is touched and this is another function that we are going to implement and if snoopy is touched then we are going to obviously insert a node to the train and we are also going to increase the speed so as the game progresses the speed has got to increase so that's what we are doing here and here we are getting possibly the, the best new position where Snoopy can be spawned. So that's what we are doing in this while loop. And we are setting the position for Snoopy at the end. So the thing that we are going to concentrate here is what is this function called is Snoopy touch. So that function determines if the head and Snoopy are at the same position. Let's declare that in our class first. So there you go. We have declared the is Snoopy touch function and it just returns a boolean that is if Snoopy is touched or not. True or false. So let's implement the function in game.cpp. So there you go. And here we are just checking if the positions are equal, nothing else. 
So if the positions are equal, it returns true, else it returns false. And we have an error here too, and that is because we haven't declared Snoopy. And Snoopy is nothing but the sprite of Snoopy. So we will have to declare that in our class, just like that. And now it should be all right. So now we have handled the important aspects of the game. And there's one last thing remaining, and that is to end the game if the train intersects itself. So let's go ahead and implement that. So first we'll need a function called check intersection and this function is going to check if the head has hit any of the other nodes and if it has hit then the window is going to be closed or else it's going to run. So let's implement this function in game.cpp. So here's the definition of the function and all this function is doing is iterating through the nodes in the linked list and checking if the position of that node is equal to the position of the head and doing the appropriate thing that is closing the window. So now that we have written these sets of new functions, we need to look at where we are going to execute them. So the handle snoopy touched function and the check intersection function have to be called every frame. So we are going to put them into the update function. We will put the handle snoopy touched function just before we initialize head and tail in the update method. So that completes our update function. So now we are done with most of our game and now all we have to do is set up the sprites for Snoopy and do some adjustments in the start function and we are good to go. So first we will need to load the sprite for Snoopy and set the texture and stuff like that. So we'll have to do that stuff in the load sprites function just like that and here we have just set the Texture, say the texture rec, that is the last square in the sprite sheet and the scale is 0.2 and the origin. So Snoopy, the sprite is ready to go. And now all we have to do is set an initial position for Snoopy. So let's go to the start function and set the initial position of Snoopy to be the same as the head of the train. So initially there will be a collision and, and after that Snoopy is going to get a random position. So that's how it's going to work. So now that we have loaded Snoopy sprite, we can go ahead and draw Snoopy onto the screen. So let's go to the render function and draw Snoopy onto the screen just like that. Now if you run source.cpp, you should see Snoopy getting a random location and you can also see that the train's length is increasing as Snoopy is being touched. So, yep, all's good. And now let's also check what happens if the train intersects with itself. So, yep, the game just ends. So that's it. And now we can go ahead and add the background and the score and stuff like that. So let's define font and the text for our score inside the class like that. And let's also have an integer variable called score and set it to minus one initially. And this will just increase. So once we have done that, we can go ahead and write the logic to increase the score as Snoopy has been touched. So as soon as Snoopy has been touched, we can increment the score and set the text for our score. And we also have to set the position for the score text. So that would be done in the start method, of course. So let's go to the start method and set the position and the string for the score just like that. Now all we have got to do is draw the score onto the screen. And don't forget that we will also have to load the font from our directory. So the font is in my directory and I'm just going to go to the load sprites method and load the font for the text. So, and we'll have to set the font for our score and the color of our score in the load sprites method and that should do it. So we have only got to now draw the score onto the screen so we will be going to the render method and just include this just like that and now the score will be displayed onto the screen but we will also need a background and we will also do that so let's go and so we will have to first declare our background sprite and background texture so we will do just like that and now we will again load the sprites and draw them onto the screen you know the drill. And we will be loading the background from the file and setting its texture, setting its scale and stuff. 
and then all you have got to do is draw the background onto the screen so the background will be drawn first before everything and everything will be drawn after that so just like that and that completes this game and if you run the main function from source.cpp you should find this on your screen so as you can see the score is increasing and the game works so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did it would help me if you smash the like button and subscribe for more such content and that's it bye for now guys and i'll see you guys in the next video